guys, it's me, Scott, your host of Game Time. All things basketball from an Australian perspective. In today's episode, we're actually going to dive into how a couple things have changed in the NBA over the last 30 years. Today I have with me my friend Brian Davis and again Aaron Bats. Um, Bats, you've been on the show before, so we don't really need a little bit of introduction. This is Bats. I'm so glad you're in. Well, this is a newcomer, this is a rookie. Yeah. Right. But Brian, um, why don't you let us know how long you've been out and how long you've been playing basketball? I came out on stage, so 19 with my uh, dad, and then like three or four years ago with my mom. And then uh, I've been playing basketball since I was 21. I joined uh, the Gay Basketball League in LA and have been playing. In today's episode, we're actually going to dive into how a couple things have changed in the NBA over the last 30 years. Scoring today is easy. Teams are scoring at a high, high volume rate. Uh, the league has changed over the last years with physicality, no more hand checking, refs are emphasizing freedom of movement, and now players are driving the basket, drawing fouls, and flopping. James Harden. Brian, I know you're a great offensive scorer. You like to score, you. so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we ain't talking about your defense. No. <laughs> yeah, see, not yet. But yeah. I, I want to know also, like, I like scoring, and it's fun to watch, but there is, to me, a certain extent of defense that needs to be played. Mm -hmm. um, do you like the way the game has evolved and has it's changed? I struggle a little bit because, uh, you know, the like defense. Even, uh, I don't struggle with it. He said a little bit, so no, <laughs> just not long. Yeah. Uh, no, just for me, like watching, for example, the All Star game. The All Star game is fun to an extent, but it just seems like it's just it's all offense, right? So yeah. there's, it almost feels like it pulls a little bit of competitiveness out of it. Uh, and I and I like when teams play defense. I like there being a physicality to the game. So I do sort of miss that this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it is ultimately good for you know for fans just to be able to see their team scoring a lot of points. But uh, I think defense is fun too. I, I agree. It is a little bit of a back and forth for me to have. Uh, Bats. I know that you definitely have been a fan. You, I've been with you and I played with you on the court. You are physical. That's me. <laughs> I won rookie of the year, the first rookie of the year award. The very first. The very, the very first. first. Yeah. <laughs> it came on a concrete tablet. Yeah. <laughs> <Etched in> stone. <laughs> Where do you keep that, by the way? <laughs> Buried in the dirt. <laughs> with so all the rest of my scrolls. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely different. I I definitely feel like the style of play when you know. The Jordans and the Shacks of the world were coming coming through the league, and um, even Patrick Ewing was one of my favorite players. Those guys were all tough and um, physical, and it was really fun to watch those guys just go at it. Whereas now it's about uh, showmanship, and yeah. so that doesn't to me doesn't feel like great basketball uh, personally. And it translates when you're playing out on the street. You see people, you know, not playing the game the right way, and you know it's all about shooting threes and not trying to you know work on the things that really make the team gel well so I, I think it reflects poorly on the community when you're trying to play that style of basketball in, in the league I, I agree in some sense I think p people might disagree with that because some people look at it as like Steph Curry is a very prime example of what NBA is people are trying to be that trying to be this three-point shooter trying to do all of that uh, crazy shots but people don't understand that Steph Curry is an amazing shooter probably going to be the best shooter in NBA history but just because you see it in the NBA, it's not something that you can just emulate it. It's, right. it's there's more facets to the game that you that's been lost. The mid range is lost. I mean, I get statistically like you would take a step back, you want a three for an extra point, but sometimes that's still a good shot. And do you guys like how do you feel about people who live and die by the three? Uh, I feel like you know just watching the game, I, you know it's kind of interesting because you see some people who have a perfectly yeah perfectly good eighteen footer wide open and then they, you know, they run back to the three-point line. Yeah. And I, don't, I just don't know that it's necessary to do that. I still think that there's value in hitting, hitting that two as long as you're a decent shooter. Um, and I don't like the game being focused so much on just all perimeter play mm -hmm. and then maybe a couple dunks and layups. I just feel like we're losing the art of the mid-game. I grew up you know, watching Kobe and I, I loved his you know, fadeaways, his mid-range jump, his you know, free throw yeah. line, 12-15 uh, foot jump shots. And, and I feel like that's kind of just non-existent in the game today. With out there being like mid-range and people are now extending the game to a three-point line, even bigs are shooting it. There's a thing now that everyone's trying to implement what the Warriors are doing. It's uh, positionless basketball. I think it's great. Um, I, I mean, without losing the physicality of the game, I think the evolution of basketball is, is growing. 
um, in a great way in terms of uh, making people multifaceted in their game. I think it's really important for a basketball player to not be one dimensional. I think it's, it's, I think it's a good uh, transition for, for basketball. I think it's uh, everybody kind of expanding their skills, skill set is a good thing. It does make it difficult to explain basketball to people who don't know how to watch, like the casual watcher, because my boyfriend doesn't watch basketball mm -hmm. at all. And he sat down with me the other day and he was like, okay, so what does this guy do? And I'm like, that's the point guard. He you know, dribbles the ball, he sets the play up, and he shoots threes. Yeah. And he's like, well, what does is, what is the big man do? And I was like, well, that's a center. And it's basically the same thing. The same thing, basically. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. I'm saying, yeah. 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 he's drinking three the ball. That is, like, when yeah. we grew up, that's, that, to me, that is just so crazy. Like, we would see Shaq do it in an all-star game. Yeah. But you didn't see Akeem Olajuwon or, like, Patrick Ewing bringing the ball up the court and dishing off. But that's, like, also, like, in a way, the sense of the evolution of the game of how things develop in, like, a natural aspect of just the athletic ability. It is a little bit different. But does it mean that, like, someone like Carl Anthony Towns, I think, should be inside Benny Moore, getting, you know, a couple shots in the post. And then getting a couple shots in the post ex expands him to be able to shoot a three-point shot, which he has, you know? Yeah. I said in the opening statement, there's an emphasis now on freedom of movement. Do you guys know what that rule is? Yeah, I, I do. And uh, I actually, I don't know if you wanted to explain No, no, no. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I feel like um, I miss the physicality of basketball. I think it's a little too easy to score right mm -hmm. now. And not that I was there to see the games in the 80s, but, you know, I'm, I still think back to when uh, Kurt Brown was, uh, got clotheslined mm -hmm. um, in that playoff game and by the Celtics. And not that we need to go to that degree, but I'm just saying, you know, a little bit of movement, a little bit of physicality, just I think it, it adds to the game. Um, you know, I, I, I like that defensive players have value um, mm -hmm. or it had value in the NBA before. And I feel like now there's, you know, they're calling so many different calls that it's, it, you know, I just yeah. feel like it's a little bit difficult to play defense now. Uh, yeah, but I feel like the NBA has been about offense forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's an offensive game. It's they say de defense wins championships, and that's that's true. Um, and I, I feel like changing the rules to cater to the offensive player doesn't do anything for the game. That's yeah. just the way I feel about it. I think you should reward good defensive players and a little bit of physicality and keep the game safe, obviously. But um, you don't need to adjust rules to make give the advantage to the offensive player. It's enough that they don't call travels, you know, yeah. like <laughs> taking five steps to the crowd three point line, line and, you know, carrying the ball and doing all of that. Like clean the game up. Like let's yeah. focus on like the fundamentals of the game and then you know, work from there. Yeah. That thing was oh, me every time. What was that? Okay. And this time it was like a double whammy. Why is that so loud? <laughs> you need to <laughs> I just want to thank you guys again for coming on the show. It really means a lot. So thanks for having us. Yeah, no problem. Again, lots yeah. of fun. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram, like us, and subscribe to us on YouTube. And that's game time. Cheers. 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 Next time we talk about defense, make sure she's on the show. Oh yeah. I wanna see no, that. No, girl, that. <laughs> I wanna see that, that tablet. That rookie of the year tablet. And we're gonna pull that out.